just look upon him. He is so beautiful. Heaven's diadem. He is so song of ascent, saith the Lord. For yea, thou shalt ascend into my presence on a song. Yea, thou shalt sing unto the Lord and go higher. Yea, higher and higher and higher, saith the Lord. For I have not made thee for lowly places. For thou art not created, yea, to be amongst that which be of the earth earthly, saith the Lord. But I have called thee unto myself. Yea, that we might walk together in heavenly places. 
son, saith the Lord, where are why then art thou content, yea, to be momentarily in the heavens, and spend the rest of the time on the earth, for I would cause thee, yea, that thou wouldst ascend, yea, again and again into my presence, yea, that thy very song, the very lifting up of thy voice, would cause thee to be able to flee away more and more unto me, saith the Lord, yea, that thy being in the earth would be only momentary, and thy dwelling in the heavens, yea, would be of a long duration, saith the Lord. Evi alamandaramai, hallelujah. Evi arriviando shandari, hallelujah. Let others lift up your voice. The Lord says, you'll ascend by song into his very presence. All of the services have been very wonderful. I was blessed this morning in the service. We began singing that song, Majesty. Every time I <coughs> sing it, I always am uh, uh, so blessed because... God has given Brother Jack Hayford from California so many beautiful songs of worship unto the Lord. <clears throat> but there seemed this morning to be such a special sense of the majesty of God that was present. Our sister gave such a beautiful prophetic word this morning about touching the Lord. Hallelujah. Such simplicity and yet it was such beauty in that prophetic word that she gave and and we just began to reach out and touch the Lord in a very special way and I began to feel such a sense of God's majesty hallelujah brother Heflin mentioned about these is uh, these Jewish friends that were here and one is a an Israeli friend the other two were born in America but <clears throat> This Israeli friend has been a friend for many years, and when I first met him, he used to always wonder, because as we spoke about the nations, and of course God sending us to leaders of the world, he has a great sense of history and, uh, uh, and a great grasp of world history and how that uh, events sort of are intertwined and one event has such a, a bearing upon another. And he always wanted to know why it was that coming from the family that I came from and coming from Virginia, that I always had this sense of wanting to meet important people and meet leaders of the world. Well, I'm sure most of it was because of my childhood experience of being in revival. Amen. And uh, the, the world vision that came out. But this morning, as we were worshiping and that great majesty of God came into our midst, I began to be conscious that in the natural realm, the closest thing you can get to this eternal realm is with world leaders. Amen. When you're with men of of position, you always sense these added qualities. They, men don't reach these positions of authority unless they are men of statue and weight. And uh, you feel this. I remember when, when I first met Emperor Haile Selassie, I had asked uh, the lady that I was staying with, a Mennonite missionary who was head of the guest house there and had been part of the revival. And I said to Sarah, Sarah, get ready because when I go and see the emperor, I want you to be ready to have something proper to wear because who knows, God may 
may give you the opportunity of meeting him as well. Well, she had lived in the country for about 26 years and had worked uh, and served the people of Ethiopia, but she had never had the opportunity of meeting him. She had seen him from a distance uh, at the opening of hospitals and the opening of public buildings uh, and had seen him on many a state occasion. But she said, yes, I'll get ready. And so she'd gotten ready for this uh, meeting and when the Lord gave me the privilege of meeting him after we had had a time together in which God had given me a prophetic word for the emperor, I then said to him, I said, oh, I said this, the, uh, the, uh, uh, my hostess here has been so gracious to me and she's sitting in the, in the reception hall waiting for me. Would you be so kind as to receive her as well? And so immediately he sent for a palace minister to go and to bring her in. Now the reason that I'm remembering that is because later Sarah said this. She said, Ruth, I have seen, seen his imperial majesty on so many occasions because when Ethiopia was uh, um, in a more developing stage, she had seen him open many an important development place, a school, a hospital, a, a something new that was taking place. She said, I've seen him on many occasions. But she said, this was the first time I ever saw him bowing to a presence that was greater than he. She said, his majesty felt his majesty, amen, in the room. And she said, when we walked in, she said, we sensed that he was bowing in his spirit, amen, to that higher presence of of God. Hallelujah. This morning in the service, uh, I was very conscious uh, that having been raised in meetings of the glory, uh, I have never been content uh, to be without uh, sitting in that same atmosphere. Uh, amen. Uh, hallelujah. You know, some people are raised uh, with a certain type of food and they're not happy unless they have it. Uh, some people are raised with a certain uh, style of a lifestyle and they're not content uh, unless they live that way. Uh, amen. Uh, but when you've been fed on the glory and felt the majesty of his presence. The courts of the Lord were made for the people of God. Amen. And God doesn't want us to live in the earthly realm. Hallelujah. The daughter of the king has been raised to live in the presence of the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's teaching us how to come into that realm of the majesty of God in every service and the very worship of our own heart makes the way for us to come in. Amen. We're the ones that reach out and touch him. And I, there, are, there are statements, you know, two or three statements that come out of every camp meeting or every series of meetings that, that pierce your heart and you remember more uh, that are written on your, on your heart in such a way that you remember them through the years. And I remember one night mother got up and, uh, and it was such a simple little word. She said this, it doesn't take very much faith to touch the heart of God. Amen. I turned to somebody that was sitting nearby. I said she just in one little statement she undid thousands of preachers sermons. You know seven steps to getting your miracle. You know 21 ways to get faith. And you know all of the, the different steps and approaches that sometimes we make the things of 
of God almost uh, unapproachable. Uh, amen. But when she said it doesn't take very much faith to touch uh, the heart of God, it doesn't. Amen. Hallelujah. But in simplicity, uh, we reach out. It's the heart that touches God. Amen. The longing heart, uh, the hunger heart, the heart that reaches out and touches him in such great simplicity. Oh, Kuribiandai, hallelujah, hallelujah. The courts of the Lord were made for praise. The courts of the Lord were made for worship. The courts of the Lord were made for the daughter of the king. Amen. The courts of the Lord were made for you and for me and God wants to put a majesty in our soul amen that we won't be content unless we feel it that we are singing of his majesty but also partakers of it amen clothed in it filled with the majesty of God Hallelujah. And in Psalm 44, 45, the sons of Korah begin to speak. And they say, my heart is bubbling over or indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. Amen. Concerning the king, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer hallelujah the, the grace that flows forth on the tongue of one who loves the Lord hallelujah to hear somebody that loves Jesus that's never ha, even had any great education but their very praise becomes a sonnet their very praise becomes a psalm. Their very praise becomes a poem. Their very praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah becomes an ode. Oh, shiki and I. My heart is bubbling over. I speak concerning the king's matter. Hallelujah. My tongue is as the pen of a red writer thou art fairer than the children of men grace is poured into thy lips therefore God hath blessed thee forever hallelujah now the verse that God spoke to me tonight is verse 17 from Psalm 45 and all since I came on the platform this verse was rolling over in my spirit and it's such an amazing verse I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord not only is the name of the Lord to be remembered but God raises up a memorial to those who pour out to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Only twice in the New Testament do we see where God speaks concerning a person having a memorial through all generations. One is with in the house of Simon the leper when the little lady came in with her alabaster box full of precious 
ointment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It was very, very precious. You couldn't call the Avon lady to bring it over to you. Amen. And have it delivered at your house. Oh no. There was not the, the counter downtown where all the varieties were available. All of the precious scents had to be brought from the east and some from Africa. Some of the ambers and, and other fragrances, they were brought great long distances and were just as valuable as gems and precious stones were because of the, the preciousness of the fragrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when she had this costly box full of ointment in the presence of the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She hadn't heard a sermon declaring that he was king. She hadn't even that by this time there hadn't been the sign over the cross saying Jesus the king of the Jews. Oh no. But when she was in his presence there was something about his presence that majesty hallelujah hallelujah that all she wanted to do was take the alabaster box and break it and pour it out unto him hallelujah some of the disciples they could only think about how much money it cost and in their in their speaking against her Jesus said for them to leave her alone she had done it by revelation hallelujah 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 for if he had had a man men come from the east to bring the precious scent to be there at his birth was not the Lord going to allow the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley to finish his life with precious scent being poured out upon him hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Rividi biharamanda na. Hola Maria Shandaramai. Horibi biharamanda ya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tibidi biharamanda ya. Hallelujah. Amanda, hallelujah. Jesus said concerning her, He said, Wherever this gospel is preached, this shall be spoken of, amen, as a memorial, hallelujah, of her, because she poured out unto the Lord, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pouring out that precious ointment, that perfume, that which was costly unto him. Hallelujah. The only other time that the scripture in the New Testament speaks about a memorial is in connection with uh, uh, the, uh, the, the man uh, in uh, <clears throat> in. in Caesarea and uh, he he didn't know the Lord but his his house uh, was known because uh, his arms went up to the Lord as a memorial hallelujah hallelujah the Lord said his giving had been a memorial unto the Lord praise the Lord and the Lord wants a people that have learned how to pour out in his his presence that his very presence makes one pour out I believe that one of the things that God wants to do here at the camp is to teach people more and more how to pour out in the old days we just sort of waited in his presence for him to pour into us and we were orientated to see how God would meet our needs need but God is teaching us to change the emphasis amen hallelujah rather than standing waiting to receive we come ready to give giving our praise giving our worship giving our adoration hallelujah praise the Lord in the presence of the king of kings and the Lord says for that one that pours out he will make their name to be remembered in all generations hallelujah praise the Lord amen bless the Lord verse 8 all thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and acacia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O oh daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty for he is thy Lord and worship thou him hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord the ornamentation that the Lord gives praise the Lord the fact that God clothes us with precious raiment and he gives us to us special fragrances but he says this all I'm asking is is that you forget your own house forget your own people I've brought you into my house I don't want you to live in the king's house and only be thinking of your father's house and your own people when you're in the king's house we should be thinking of the king amen Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants to cut some uh, umbilical cords. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants us uh, to be our father's daughter uh, and not our father's daughter. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to cut some ties uh, so that we can pour out unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We tend to visit Father's house, don't we? Uh, we come into the King's house uh, and, and we're there, but we quickly remember what's got to be done uh, and we go back to that earthly realm. Uh, but 
but God wants a people, hallelujah, that are going to be more comfortable at the king's table, amen, than even at McDonald's, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. He wants a people that can sit down and have the delicacies. Oh, bless the Lord. Look at the several of these verses. Verse 13, the king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought into the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee with gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought they shall enter into the king's palace now when I read that part about the gladness and rejoicing last night at the altar we, a, a, a number of people had wonderful visions but uh, you know this one of the brothers came up to me afterward and he said uh, he said I've never had a vision before I'm not sure if this was a vision but he said when you began to sing about the rejoicing he said I saw the angels rejoicing around the throne I said what did you say he said I saw the angels dancing and rejoicing around the throne I said yes brother that's a vision amen hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah ha, there is rejoicing anywhere that the king is and they say the greatest sign that the presence of God is in an individual's life is joy amen joy is the greatest indication of the presence of the king and don't say he's just with you in you around you and you're overflowing with him and you have no joy <laughs> with gladness and rejoicing <laughs> with gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought they shall enter into the king's palace oh Karibia Shandai oh he has courts are made for his people this isn't the isolated story of the king and the and his family that are on the mountain isolated oh no hallelujah he brings us into his palace he brings us into his courts we don't have to only stand on the street and see his majesty pass by oh no he gives us the privilege of coming near of drawing very near of feeling that great majesty of heaven oh, oh. hallelujah 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 praise the lord oh bless the lord windsor castle just a, a short distance from London is where the Queen entertains many of her state guests. And I can't remember the exact number of chairs now. I went there one day because I had seen a vision and I wanted to go and count the chairs at the table. Amen. It was the longest table and so wide and my the appointments on the table. Oh, each, each place had its own beautiful candelabra and all of the exquisite things that were laid on the table. Uh, the, the palace is open in the daytime for ordinary folks like you and me to walk through and to see these things. But that table was longer than this room is wide. Amen. With room, I think it was something like 77 uh, or 78 places at the table and of course everybody had plenty of room just to sit there but he has the table spread and most of 
of us say, Lord, just give me a rain check. I don't have time to come to this table. It's, you know, these formal feasts, they take a few hours. It's a whole evening's occasion, and we've gotten accustomed, you know, to a quick dinner and get up and do what we've got to do, and that's what we do with the house of God. Come in and sit down hallelujah let his majesty permeate your being <laughs> hallelujah if we would be but to get more and more a feel of his glory a feel of his majesty a feel of him hallelujah hallelujah we all that's part of tasting amen amen part of tasting is sitting in his presence feeling what his majesty is like being permeated by his uh, his glory <coughs> feeling the the kingship of the lord hallelujah hallelujah oh kuriya mandai you know when you know somebody well you're not overawed by the position to the extent that you feel comfortable. Amen. And it's so easy to ask a favor. Some people, they only know, for instance, President Reagan well enough that they come in and they have the official, you know, bowing ceremonies and little nods and handshakes. And they have to quickly come to the request because they're just being given enough time to make their request and leave. But then the president has some people that <clears throat> he invites for weekends. Amen? Camp David, out in California at the ranch. Maybe a little trip, you know, to Hawaii or Japan along with Nancy. And you understand what I'm saying? And that person doesn't have to come quickly to the request. In fact, they probably don't even need to request very much because everybody knows they really know President Reagan. You understand what I'm saying? It's relationship that opens the door. Hallelujah. Some people get in for a quick request. But there are others that because of relations, the door opens. Ways are made. Hallelujah. He knows the president. He spends time with him. Amen. Hallelujah. And in the same way, those who spend time with the king of kings. <laughs> Hallelujah. They don't even need to make the request. Hallelujah. The needs are anticipated and met. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord with gladness and rejoicing. Shall they be brought? They shall enter into the king's palace. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We bless you, Lord. And then in verse 16, one of my favorite verses. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord because we are willing to forget Father's house because we're willing to forget our own people because we're not looking back to Father in that day. Amen. But we're looking to the King. Hallelujah. He begins to be mindful of the children. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, I'll take the children and you're, I'll take your seed and I'll raise them up.
up and I'll make them princes in all the earth and I'm not content until people from this ministry are standing on all the continents among all the nations not just as humble little people down there but I want them to stand as Joseph's among the nations amen that if they're in Egypt they're only in Egypt for God's purposes to be fulfilled through them. Amen. Princes, those that are raised up from this ministry and because of our relationship with God. Amen. That will make the difference in the course of history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will be people that are used greatly of God in these last days. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What will cause it to happen? A familiarity with the king, knowing his palaces, being clothed in his garments, being anointed with his anointings. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord, bringing in, hallelujah, our friends and companions to enjoy his presence as well. And then he says, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. I just keep feeling God wants to bring great enlargement. Any word I can think of that has a touch of it increase, enlargement, promotion, honor, glory, acceptance, amen, fame, your name remembered, he's going to do all of these, not for your sake, amen, he's going to do it to show people that if they will pour out their souls unto the Lord in and pour out themselves in praise and worship and adoration, pour out themselves in their giving, that God will cause their name to be remembered, not because you've got a good genealogy, not because you've got a good educational background, not because you've got a good social standing, not because of your own personal achievements in this world. There, heaven's got its own book of who, who, who's who. And I tell you this, it's not the earth's, it's Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The who's who of God. But he says this. If you'll pour out yourself in the king's presence, I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh my, we think back historically to some of the great ones that God has used when they were pouring out themselves the Wesley brothers, amongst others, they hardly had enough money to get from this pouring out place to the next one. Amen. But has not God caused their name to be remembered amongst the generations? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is an entering in. Remember when when the queen of Sheba came up to see King Solomon and she said the half was not told me and when she was there she not only praised King Solomon but she got down to the place she was even praising those 
who waited on him, those who served him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we can wash his, his feet with our tears. Amen. And praise and worship. We can bow down and anoint his feet just like the woman did with the alabaster box. Here we can draw near unto his majesty. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The greatest transformation comes in his presence. <laughs> As we are pouring out, he is changing us. When that beautiful glory comes, I like to just sometimes sit in it. I have a couple of favorite chairs in Jerusalem. And sometimes after a service in which God has come upon us so greatly and everybody's gone home, I just sit there not praying, not even meditating, just sitting in that atmosphere of the majesty of God. <laughs> I need that to permeate my soul and spirit, and you do too. Amen. If we don't, we're going to be earth earthly. But God wants us to be of the heaven, heavenly. Hallelujah. He wants to pour heaven into our soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He wants us to be those that dwell in his courts that are known. Hallelujah. In the gates because we dwell in his presence hallelujah and our heavenly father we just believe thee that that very same majesty shall be manifested in our midst this evening teach us more and more how to pour out ourselves teach us more and more how to lift up our voices hallelujah and pour out our soul continually unto thee oh barit You've brought us, O oh Lord, into your palace. You've brought us, O oh Lord, into your chambers. You've brought us, O oh Lord, Lord, unto yourself. And we want to be those that pour out, that we don't hold back anything or reserve anything for ourselves, but we pour out upon thee. <laughs> oh, Kuribia Shandaraba. She, oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Could we just gather here at the altar tonight? Oh, Buritiana Mashando, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Kuritiana, I see Alamo. God, uh, keeping them record. God, making the memorial. Uh, oh, Parisiando, Bariandai. See, my love. Riviara, Riviara, Randa, Let's sing in the spirit as we come.